Welcome to Kitty Conference, where we are all about bringing out the best in our kids. So this week was a bit strange. We got a warning early in the week of a massive storm that was approaching our coastline. Um, they spoke about, one of the articles I read spoke about a biblical amount of rain that was expected. And our KZN schools were even released early. Um, so everybody was really up in arms about this massive storm that was approaching. With that, most of our parents kept their kids at school, so our attendance was really just a handful of kids most of the week. But nonetheless, we did have a very good week. The storm never came, though, not to Margate specifically. Um, we did have some other things going on in the province, but not for us too much. But yeah, so we had a bit of a strange week with that, but we had a mostly indoor week, and we had a lot of fun with that as well. Um, but over and above the normal, we had the theme and the phonic and the mathematical concepts. Our kiddies played a couple of in indoor games as well um, because they were cooped up in small space, a small space basically the whole week. So we did some games and one of the games that we did is the pom-pom and straw challenge. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's a really fun game where kids use a straw to blow the pom-pom to another side of the table and um, they do it in a short sp space of time. So we had the, the minute to win it countdown clock. Um, the game begins in three, two, one and then the kiddies would start blowing their little straws and get the pom-poms to the other side in a quick amount of time as well. So they had a lot of fun with that game. Our um, slightly smaller kiddies didn't quite catch the blowing of the straw, so they used the straw like a bit of a stick to get the pom-poms to the other side, and our very small kiddies just used their hands. And they got all caught up in the hype of all this commotion and game and excitement, and they were very excited that they managed to do the game as well. So that was really fun for them. But yes, our theme for this week was music. With that, we did a bit of a, a different thing this week. Our kids did learn the names of different instruments. But what we also did is I uh, took a guitar and our kiddies practiced their hand at playing Baby Shark. So I had the guitar, I did the chords, and my kiddies did the strumming. So that was a lot of fun. If you are a little bit into guitaring or musical instruments, it's not difficult chords at all to play. It's just a G, C, E minor, and I think it's a D. Um, so it's very easy, no capo, just straight. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Our kiddies could learn to play an instrument. <laughs> and they were very excited with themselves that they were able to do that as well. Gave them a different dimension to exploring musical instruments. So that was a lot of fun. We did a lot of crafty things as well. So I have a few busy box ideas for this week. Those of you who have are interested in busy box ideas. Busy box is where you've got a little box with all your crafty goodies inside. You've got your googly eyes, pipe cleaners, pom-poms, crafty paper etc and at any given time you take out the box and you and your kitty make something cute with it so a couple of busy box ideas for this week we made some christmas tree decorations you can do christmas tree decorations just some icicle sticks or popsicle sticks pom-poms piece of ribbon you can do a bit of glitter and there you go got a little christmas tree decoration our kitties also made some gorgeous little toilet roll flowers which they painted they were quite chuffed with themselves quite excited with themselves about that Here's another one, really cute, beautiful, very simple to make. And then they made some toilet roll bugs, which was very nice as well. Some of our kitties made some butterflies, colored in, glitter glue, you know, toddlers, glitter, very good combination. So we had some butterflies, we had some ladybugs and flowers. Some of them just opted for drawing their own little flower and they did a great job of doing that as well. So a couple of busy box ideas for this week. Um, and then with regards to curriculum, our kiddies did some scissor practice and they did some gorgeous music themed coloring in pictures. Here's one, the drum, really sweet. Uh, we had a cute Spongebob themed band thing going on. Um, so with the, the kids identifying different musical instruments and recognizing or hearing the sounds that instruments make, this was a very fun one to do with that. So they had to point out which instruments are in the, the picture and then color those. So that was very nice. And um, yeah, with that, our phonic for the week was the letter X. Um, or we can, we call it, we, we tell our kids that it sounds like this, Z. Or sometimes the letter has more than one, one way of sounding, like this one. So sometimes it just sounds like X, like as an X-ray. Or Z, xylophone, or X-ray. So there is their little xylophone craft. We took some black construction paper, cut out an X. With that, we also learned that there is a hand signal for X. So you can do it like this. This is a small X. And a big X is when you put your arms out, almost like you're doing jumping jacks, put your arms and legs out and you've got a big X. So there's our little phonic stimulation idea for this week. 
and with it we took some colorful popsicle sticks and we created our own little xylophone craft which was cute for mathematical concepts we also practiced a couple of shape identifications some shape stamping identifying shapes before stamping as well so our kids did very well with that so we're doing at the end of the year we always do mathematical revision instead of introducing new concepts but we also did things like um, school readiness skills such as identifying senses so guitar do you hear it with your ears or do you smell it with your nose you hear it with your ears or a dog barking do you hear it with your ears or do you taste it with your mouth you hear it with your ears <laughs> So they did that kind of thing as well. So oh, with that, we did a lot of getting ready for big school stuff, and they had a very good week. Um, yeah, so we've got the, they play the Baby Shark song, which was added a new dimension to classroom, preschool classroom, identified some musical instrument, listened to what they sound like, did the X sound, and a lot of counting skills, colors, shapes, identification, um, and they did very good with that this week as well. As we head towards the almost, we only got about two weeks left of term four, um, of actual learning term four. So yeah, we're getting towards the end of the, the term, end of the year, and we are beginning to get closer and closer to finishing up our revision for the year as well. But that was basically a um, preschool update for this week. Our baby room, our babies, um, we did some, as we always do, we do baby massage three to four times, mostly three times a week, tummy time four times a week, three to four times, depending on how willing baby is. And tummy time is just such a wonderful thing. It strengthens them so enormously, so quickly. So I'm always a fan of giving babies lots and lots of tummy time. We also did some tactile stimulation, stimulating different textures. Did a lot of color stimulation, bright colors. Um, and then I also did quite a bit of supported sitting exercises, strengthening upper core with supported sitting exercises. And obviously also leg strengthening exercises as well, getting those legs ready for crawling and legs ready for standing so we did a lot of those as well so baby room was very good um for at home stimulation idea for this week for baby room um this is what i would recommend so we know that baby's most favorite person most of the time is mom um, and one of the things babies love doing the most in the world is spending time with mom so most babies anyway <laughs> So what I would recommend for at-home stimulation for this week is take your baby in your arms and just walk through the house. And as you walk through the house, point out things and give them names. So, oh, this is a window. Look at that. We can see through the window. And look at that. That's a bird. And um, look at that. That's outside. This is inside. And then you can point out, look at this. This is a door. And this, this pink one, this is your curtain. Um, ooh, this blue one, this is your bottle. So you just walk through the house from room to room, pointing out and identifying things. And Kitty is in, in having an absolute blast because baby is spending time with most favorite person, most likely, which is mom. And um, it gives them a bit of, it helps them with their first words as well, stimulating first words and identif identifying their environment and all that sort of thing. So that's just a fun way of doing at home stimulation with your baby for this week if you want to. Grab baby, we, mom and baby, get to spend a bit of time together, or dad or granny, it doesn't matter. Um, anybody who loves baby can walk through the house and point out things in the house. So, common things that will later become things that the child is able to identify with and that is from familiar to the child as they develop but that's a fun way to just stimulate your baby at home just walk through the house and point things out and name them so that's baby room stimulation idea for this week um big kitty stimulation for this week is just music is a very easy one to do so with music what we always do is just point out instruments obviously have a bit of dancing have some silly dancing um and you know as far as possible just exposing them to different musical instruments music genres and just, you know, kids and music, they are like water and toddlers. They just go together. So it's not difficult to do at-home stimulation for music. But yeah, with that um, big kitty talk, I feel it is quite important to talk a little bit more about discipline. The reason I say that is there's a very interesting dynamic in our country going on at the moment. Um, so we've got some laws changing with regards to discipline. And in 1997 in our country, this corporal punishment within schools was removed from our system. So it was no longer allowed in schools, but it was still allowed in a home setting. Then in 2017, a law was passed saying that even at home, 
or uh, corporal punishment or you know, spanking that is commonly referred to in a home setting is no longer acceptable and that there are other means of applying discipline and um, with that though if there was a bit of leeway given if it was reasonable or moderate then it would sort of be overseen a little bit but now in September 2019 that has been really rejected completely and it has been said within the high courts that it is basically against our constitution and it goes against a child's right to dignity to be spanked so there's a big thing going on about that um ecd centers preschools are very much aware of that and so it is a big thing and what i find the reason i feel it's important to talk about it is a lot of our parents were raised or a parenting model was shaped for them where spanking especially reasonable and moderate a spanking was an acceptable means of parenting now we've moved into an environment in our country where that is no longer acceptable it has actually become illegal um, so a lot of parents find that they are not exactly sure how to apply discipline as well anymore and as soon as you get to a point where you sort of communicate to your child that you're not completely sure or you're a little bit not in control they tend to take that quite quickly and it can become a bit of a discipline chaos so that is why i feel it's so important to talk a little bit about discipline and um, clarify last week we talked we spoke about tantrums and time out and that's why i feel it's important to talk about that or maybe just talking about it a little bit could be helpful for parents um, a preschool setting with regards to discipline is very often different from a home environment um, so use from this what you can and apply it however you feel fit as, as a parent. But yeah, that is basically what's happening. So just to add to something that I spoke about last week, I mentioned that one of the things I feel is quite important when disciplining especially small children is relationship. So the reason I say that is I find that when I have cultivated a bit of relationship and a sense of trust in a child, it is a little bit easier for me to mold or shape behavior for them. Um, for example, a little while ago we had a child who started at our school and he was a new child. And we all know what it's like when you start a new job, you feel a little bit nervous or, you know, a high school child changes schools and starts going to a new school or something like that and moving, starting in a new town. It, there's a bit of stress involved with that and, and uncertainty. So preschool kids, when they start at preschool or a new preschool, they've got something similar going on. The first week to up to about a month can be a bit strange for them it, it, it is a little bit um, stressful for them so what happened is this specific kid he just started at our school and on his very first day at our school he got a terrible fever spike and um, his mom unfortunately was a bit stuck at work so she was not able to come um, and although it's not ideal what ended up happening is that i had to get him into a lukewarm bath just to there was no medication with me either so i had to and help break that fever quickly and i had to put him in a lukewarm bath so what obviously happened there is now you've got this child feeling very not stressed but nervous about the new environment and um, he's now with this new teacher this new auntie that he has never seen or met before and on his very first day he is stripped of his clothes he's left with his little nappy and he is put in a bath that he has never bathed in before and um, so it's all very it's not ideal um definitely not on your first day but with that I was with him and I really comforted him and and helped him to feel safe and protected and kept reaffirming that he's going to feel better soon and mommy's going to bring some medicine now um, as soon as she could anyway but she was a bit stuck so whenever you have a situation where you would know that if you are in a bad space and somebody is there for you it really does a lot for your relationship with that person I wouldn't say bad space as such but this child was going through a bit of a, a stressful day if I can say that and then there was this lady who was helping him and guiding him and assisting him and feeling a little bit better now the reason I say that is that is building relationship you know in a way so that's assisting with building relationships so from there on I realized that anytime I do apply a bit of discipline however mild not much discipline is needed with that specific child because he knows that whether he doesn't whether or not he agrees with what I have to say at that specific moment whether or not he does want to share at that specific moment in the grander picture of things he knows that this lady does actually really care about him and he really is in a safe environment so that's just a little example of how deep relationship can go and how much it can assist in having discipline or behavior correction done a little bit easier or with a little bit less stress or a little bit less effort 
not that there's never effort, but um, having relationship goes a long way to showing a child that they are still in a safe environment, even if they do get to a point where they are disciplined, and um, that they are still loved very much, and that the person who is applying the discipline actually really does care about them in the bigger scheme of things, even though they don't have much foresight, they, they do understand that this person makes them feel loved. And if somebody makes them feel loved, it is easier for them to listen to what that person has to say. So if a grown up um, asks you to share and you don't want to share or not grab a toy from a friend's hand, but you know that this lady makes you feel accepted and loved, um, it is more likely that the child is going to listen. Not always, <laughs> children are children and toddlers can be terribly irrational and unreasonable but just more or less it does help quite a bit to going a bit of a distance if you have a relationship with a child so normally if I have a new child at my school within the first month or so I'm not terribly strict um, I would allow my I would obviously enforce the rules now we don't play that way we play safe on the equipment or you know we don't take things from a friend's hand or but I wouldn't really be strict as such and I definitely wouldn't apply too much time out or on the mat time or things like that as far as possible because in that space I'm developing a relationship with that child and I know that once that child knows that the stranger really does care about them it is a little bit easier to manipulate them into <laughs> better behavior so that is why I mentioned in the previous message that relationship for me is quite important you do often find we all know what it was like as a child you had this maybe this miserable aunt or this mean grandpa or grandma and whenever you saw them they just suddenly would teach you do things that way and not that way and that always made us all feel a little bit yeah that, you, that wasn't a fun experience so um that always made us feel a little bit you know on edge or whatever the case may be or a little bit unwelcome whereas if it was your loving granny said oh lovey please don't stand on the couch or the sofa then that's the first thing you do that you would get off the couch or the sofa for example and um yeah so relationship in with regards to discipline is something similar. It is horrible if um, somebody who doesn't know a child very well does try and enforce discipline on them. And the best way to develop relationship with kids, most of you would know this, but is unfortunately to spend a lot of time with them. It's something we don't always have a lot of. But for kids, telling them that, that you love them, the best way to demonstrate that is to spend a lot of time with them. So developing, spending time with the child, developing that re relationship with them does go a very long way to having effective discipline. It's not a foolproof plan, but it does help a lot. So that is why I did mention that a relationship is very, very important with discipline and especially with toddlers. And um, they are very loving, very emotional little beings. So if they know that they are loved and they are safe, it isn't too difficult to correct their behavior <laughs> in a certain way. So that is why I mentioned that. But yeah, it is a very interesting dynamic in our country with regards to discipline and laws changing and things being enforced. In 2017, up till now, it was there was leeway for giving spanking or um, corporal punishment within the home setting if it was reasonable and moderate. But now things are going a bit crazy. There's a lot of debate about it. A lot of communities not happy about it because parents now feel that their right to parenting is in many ways being compromised. Um, some religions, I know that Christianity says, you know, well, that goes against the Bible. So there's a lot of debate about it. But the long and short of it is there are other ways of discipline. And so we can discuss some of, some of those. And hopefully this is a little bit helpful. So that is why I mentioned relationship in preschool setting or spe specifically with children, parenting. Having a strong relationship with your child does go a very far way to getting behavior modeled in a certain way. Not foolproof, but it helps. So yeah, that is basically my little two cents for this week. I hope that helps. Baby stimulation, walk through the house, talk to your kitty about all the different things you see. Music, ugh, music and toddlers is really not difficult. Put on a little bit of music, especially kitty songs, and you would have them dancing out their sillies in no time. If you wanted to add them stimulation, just point out a couple of instruments, let them hear what they sound, sound like. And if you are a guitaring type of parent or uncle or cousin, Baby Shark is a, it's a great way to get your kitties to go dilly about music. So that is our update for this week. I hope that is helpful. And um, as one of my favorite quotes go with regards to music <laughs> for kitties, well, most of us have heard this one. Forget dancing like there is, forget dancing like no one is watching. Rather dance like a toddler because they don't even care if there is music. So till next time, take care.